Hello, my name is Andrew Marston, and this is my presentation on Dr. Walter Brueggemann. Dr. Brueggemann was born in 1933 in Tilden, Nebraska. He was the son of a German pastor, and his father pastored a German church in Missouri not long after the, uh, the Second World War. Um, and this shaped his perspective on languages because his father attempted to push uh, the congregants of the church to speak English rather than German because of the negative connotations that German uh, carried in that time because of the Second World War. Um, it came to a point where eventually, because he felt like the older people in the church still needed to hear that German language, he would preach one sermon a month in German. Um, but his father felt as though if they did not keep on moving into the, uh, the new English language, that they would lose the following generation. Um, that they wouldn't want to speak German anymore in the churches and that they would just leave. Um, this helped shape uh, Brueggemann's perspective on languages, he says in the interview. Uh, he hadn't even realized that it shaped him until the person interviewing him had uh, mentioned it to him. But he agreed that it did shape his uh, way that he viewed languages, especially even in the biblical context, um, and how it can matter uh, and shape interpretation of the biblical, the biblical text. Um, he attended multiple universities for both his undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral work. Um, the place where he received his undergraduate was in Illinois. He then uh, he worked during the time of the third wave. Um, now there were three waves: uh, one in the th of biblical theology um, that were marked out in a couple of the sources that I looked at. The first one happened in the 1930s, and it was this. Um, belief that through biblical theology one can look at the historical context and give them a little bit more insight um, on how to interpret the biblical text and do it well. Uh, the second wave was more of an introspective look. It happened around the 1950s to the 1960s, which was again a time around the Second World War um, when it had just uh, ended not too long prior. This caused um, more of an introspective look at the Old Testament. Uh, how was evil at work in the world? Um, what were the responses of the Israelites? What were their reactions? Um, this caused a, bit, a more introspective biblical theology. Uh, by the time that Brueggemann came along with the third wave of biblical theology in around the 70s, um, biblical theology had kind of stopped advancing. There were no new uh, new thoughts, new ways of looking at it, and there was a concern that biblical theology, biblical theology as a whole, as a practice, would start to uh, deteriorate and soon disappear. Uh, Brueggemann did not settle for that. He kept on pushing forward and found new ways to critique the text um, with, through biblical criticisms, and he kept on moving forward, but he also remembered the practices of the past, so created this nice hybrid way of looking at scripture as a whole. Um, he believed in a mixture of methods already used and also hoping to develop new methods of biblical criticism. He was a biblical the theologian first, um, believed in a what does the text say approach very clearly. Uh, everything in the text seemed to matter to Brueggemann. Um, and he used multiple forms of biblical criticism, such as uh, rhetorical criticism, um, historical criticism, literary criticism, um, really focused in on what would this text mean to the people that were writing it, the people it was written about, what does it mean through the years in uh, religious um, history, and what does it mean to us today, and how can we apply it to our lives. He was a self-proclaimed postmodern theologian. This was um, postmodern in the sense that he didn't always agree with the uh, with the Enlightenment approach. Um, some of the things that the Enlightenment brought about in terms of um, just theological beliefs. Uh, so he does believe that he's a postmodern theologian. Um, he believes he'd be called a soft Calvinist, although he said that growing up in a more German culture, that doctrinal beliefs weren't really a an issue. Um, it wasn't something that was really talked about very often. 
uh, but he would say that his friends would call him a soft Calvinist. Uh, he's a lover of languages, especially when referring to the prophets. Um, he said that his uh, Old Testament professor really instilled in him this idea of uh, loving the languages, really just seeking out and learning uh, Hebrew and Greek to find new meaning in the biblical texts, um, and that he himself would say to his students how important it is to uh, to study the languages, to know the languages, because it adds so much to especially the writings of the prophets that it can really make them feel like it's contemporary writing that's really still active today, um, not just an old, uh, old text talking about things that happened back then and don't apply now, because he truly believes that what happened then still applies today in multiple facets, especially in the social justice world. Brueggen, Brueggen, in closing, Brueggemann clearly had an effect on thousands of theologians and Christians. Uh, he had written over 100 books. Um, these books, uh, most famously, his books on prophetic um, imagination, uh, and also his books over the Psalms. But he had also written several books that were just simply his prayers, his everyday hymns and songs that he would sing and pray to the Lord. Um, he believed that these were valuable and uh, they were well thought out theologically, and he wanted to share those with the world. Uh, he believed in the value of the sociological experiment that the Israelites offer. Um, this is a very important thing here because it means that he would look at the text not only for uh, who God was in this text, but who God's people were in this text. Um, and he really believed that the two of them worked together uh, to create one true biblical theology. Um, he has revolutionized the way that the biblical text is read, studied, taught, and preached. Um, even today, we can know that uh, the biblical theology that we're receiving is a uh, post-third wave theology uh, that Brueggemann really helped to bring about, helped pioneer. Um, so as we now uh, learn from Dr. Michelson, who's been influenced by uh, Dr. Walter Brueggemann, we know that um, he's influenced us uh, indirectly, but he's influenced many, many others through his university teachings and books directly.